is Wednesday, May 13th, 6 p.m. Uh, thank you for tuning in to the athens Clark County District 6 Commission debate hosted by the athens Clark County Democrats. I'm Jake Druckman, a reporter with the Red and Black. I'm here with incumbent District 6 Commissioner Jerry Neesmith and Jesse Houle, who is also running for District 6 Commissioner. Okay, I'll go ahead and explain the structure of the debate for both the candidates and the viewers. I will ask a question to a candidate going back and forth, and that candidate who I direct the question to will have two minutes to answer. Uh, once they're finished responding, the other candidate will have an opportunity for a one minute rebuttal. And the initial candidate after that will have 30 seconds to rebut that rebuttal. Um, I will hold up a card to indicate that a uh, candidate has 30 seconds remaining, and I'll hold up a stop card when you should finish up your sentence and finish your response. Uh, do, you, do either of you have any questions about that? No, thanks. Thank you. All right. So the, the debate will begin with a one minute opening statement from each candidate and will end with a two minute closing statement from each candidate. Um, I'll decide who goes first with a coin flip and um, I will give heads to Jesse Hool and tails to Mr. Neesmith if that is okay with you. Sounds All right. great. All right, it is tails. So Mr. Neesmith, uh, yes, you sir. can go ahead and begin your one minute opening statement. Thank you. My name is Jerry Neesmith and I am the candidate for re-election to my third term as athens Clark County Commissioner of District 6, the West Side. The role of local government is to protect the citizens, maintain order, to protect the people's rights, to provide essential infrastructure and services, and to help citizens in need and promote a healthy economy. It is the role of the mayor and commission to formulate policies and practices in pursuit of these duties of the government. It is our duty to serve as the conduit of communication and accountability between the citizens and businesses and the local government. That is how I measure the importance of my work and the relative importance of my tasks, not by what some political organization or political party sees as its priorities for me. I work on that behalf of everyone, regardless of political party, race, gender, identity, income, or age. I serve the entire community as your representative in the local government. All right, and uh, Jesse Hull, would you like to have your opening statement? Yeah, thank you, Jake. Well, these have been difficult times for all of us, and we still have a long way to go. And I'm not just talking about the struggles we face with this pandemic. I'm talking about the struggles too many of us have been ignoring for years. The difficulties we face today are piled on top of problems our local government has failed to face for generations. This campaign's slogan is Transform Athens. So what does that mean? Uh, it means that the status quo has failed us, and we can't afford to keep making the same mistakes. We need bold changes. As I've said many times, the local government, let alone one commissioner, is not going to change everything. So what we need are people who are willing to fight for those changes and who are up to the task of continuing to do so when it isn't easy. It's clear right now that it won't be easy. So why would we believe that the very same people who have sat on their hands or stood in the way of progress for the last eight years are the best equipped to make the big decisions that we need in these times? Both of us have extensive experience doing political work in this community, but we've spent our time prioritizing different things. I am the person in this race who is committed to real change. And I've been doing just that work for the past 12 years here in Athens, and I'm really excited to do it with you all in the years ahead. Thank you, muted, Jake. I was muted, thank you. Uh, thank you both for your opening statements. And now with that said, we will jump right into questions. And uh, the first question is going to be for Mr. Neesmith. And obviously, the issue on the community's mind is still the COVID-19 pandemic. And in your opinion, have the county's actions been adequate in dealing with the repercussions of the disease? And what should have been done differently? I think the county has responded uh, as well as it could. And it was among the first counties, first local governments to respond on the entire East Coast. Uh, we have adjusted our, when, when, when we had our orders in place before the governor preempted us, we adjusted our orders as we learned more about ways that businesses could operate in a different way or that they may have rights to operate. Uh, we have, uh, and it's been effective. If you, if you look at the statistics, um, our, our death rates are low. Our, our uh, hospitalization rates are very low. Uh, and, and we've done quite well. And our citizens who deserve most of the credit have responded splendidly. 
with social distancing, staying at home, wearing masks and all those things that are required, our citizens and our businesses. So I'm very proud of them. Could what we could have done better? I don't know. This is a unique situation and we learn day by day by day. Um, we're doing the best we can. We're listening to the epidemiologists. They're giving us guidance about what our next step are, steps are. And of course, now the governor is in charge. It's now up to the citizens and the businesses to voluntarily comply with the, the, the social distancing and the, the guidelines from the CDC and from the local government. All right, and uh, Jesse, if you would like to rebut. Yeah, I think the key part of that question for me is what could be done differently. And I think about what could have been done before we were in this pandemic. So I talk a lot about how this pandemic is exacerbating the crises that have been normalized in our community. And we can't go back to normal. We can't be looking at the past to repeat our mistakes in the future. So one thing that really sticks out to me is the gratuities clause. It's kind of this obscure to many people clause in the Georgia State Constitution that has been used in a, as an excuse for years to dismiss what a lot of us have been calling for as changes to meaningfully address poverty in this community. So now in response to COVID, we've seen the local government step up. We've seen the mayor and commission begin to direct the manager and the attorney to research how we can successfully navigate that clause to get people the direct help they need. But how come that work wasn't happening years ago? If we had already been leaning into the baby bonds proposals or other proposals we talked about to fight poverty that I've stood alongside people to fight for for years, we would have been better equipped to respond more quickly, more efficiently, and more effectively in these times, as well as tackle the poverty problem, which we need to stop talking about and actually tackle. Okay, thank you. And uh, Mr. Neesmith, you have a 30 second rebuttal. Sure. Um, the hindsight is beautiful, Jesse. Uh, but the fact is that we have figured out a way to navigate to navigate the uh, gratuities clause by creating the Economic Development Foundation with the city of Winterville. And we're moving forward with that to provide no interest grants to our businesses. So we are, we are responding to things as best we can. All right. Um, so the next question for, will be for Jesse. And um, Jesse, um, other than the coronavirus, what is the most critical challenge that athens Clark County is facing today? And what would you do to respond to it? Sure. So we've been talking about poverty for as long as I've lived here. We have this shameful 38% poverty rate. And among the many things that hasn't changed in the last eight years that my opponent has been in office is that poverty rate has remained the same. And alongside that is an abysmal wealth inequality rate, one of the worst in the nation. Alongside that is a below average unemployment rate. We have people in this community working hard, just as they have been all along, and not getting their fair share. So the same way I think we most successfully step up as a local government to tackle this challenge that we're facing in this pandemic is to focus on the people who need the help the most. And that means tackling the very same problem we should have been tackling before. Um, you know, my opponent said hindsight's great, but this isn't just hindsight, this is who has the foresight, who has the vision for the change we need. And I think we need to treat our role as commissioners as aligning with a vision so that we're not just having kind of conservative reactions to the things that are brought to us, but we're actually bringing things to the table ourselves. We're stepping up as legislators to do more than the bare minimum, to really lean in and make changes happen, to pass comprehensive policies that will make a difference. So examples of that that I've been advocating for for years are a tenant's bill of rights and really focusing on affordable housing policies or a suite of policies that we can actually step up and pass that would make a difference in keeping people in their homes. Um, if we had passed eviction reforms we've been advocating before already, then the struggles that people are facing in this time would be less dire. Um, and when it comes to poverty, again, this isn't just about hindsight. We would talk, we've been talking about how we need to set up something to get money to people who are in need before this. So the solution of setting up a development authority, if we had people in office who were advocating for that with the same sense of urgency they are now, which they should have been, because 38% of people are living in poverty, we would have already figured that out. The answer is no different now than it was a year ago. Okay, uh, Mr. Neesmith, you have a minute rebuttal. Would you repeat the question? Sure. So um, other than the coronavirus, what is the most critical challenge athens Clark County is facing today? And what would you do to respond to it? 
Well, of course, the, the, the post-pandemic is critical crisis because we have to recover from the economic damage that's, that's being done right now as we speak. And, and that is one of the reasons that we created the Development Foundation was to help some of our small, our small businesses recover uh, from the harm that's been done to them. Uh, I agree that poverty in this town is a, is a, a, a problem that we need to focus on more. Uh, in the past, we've worked on economic development with some success trying to create jobs. But if you do the research, you'll find that, that creating opportunities for the impoverished requires family support, it requires racial equity, it requires workforce development, support in education, and, and, and social capital and stability. Those are big subjects and they require uh, a, a lot. I think that that we we are have we have started down the road to working on poverty. We as a commission will not solve this problem. It's multi generational. It's been here since after the Civil War. It's going to take a lot of work, and it'll take more than local government to do it. With such things as Medicare reform at the state level. All right. Thank you, Mr. Neesmith. And Jesse, you have a thirty second rebuttal. I guess I'm disappointed to keep hearing the same, We these problems are too big and the government can't solve it. I mean, it's true that these problems are big and that's why we need big ideas to make big changes. So we need people who are willing to lean in, treat this as a full-time job, work overtime when things are really hard and legislate. We need people who are going to lean in and do the work to pass these policies. Can we solve the entirety poverty crisis, which is a global crisis, uh, by local government measures alone? Absolutely not. But we can do a lot of things to make it better. All right, thank you both. And um, the next question will go to Mr. Neesmith. And uh, Mr. Neesmith, what experience and skills would you bring to the commission that your opponent would not? Well, um, first of all, I have been a, a, an elected official for coming up on eight years. And before that, I served nine years on the Planning Commission, athens Clark County Planning Commission. Uh, back in the late 70s, um, uh, we lived in Atlanta, where I was a part of what we called then the neighborhood movement, which was us uh, young hippies moving back into the city and buying old houses and having babies and fixing up those houses and fighting highways and fighting commercial encroachment, uh, trying to create a, a way of life back in the city again after white flight had occurred in the, in the early 70s. Um, I've always been a, a attentive to 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 the workings of government. I'm now on the Board of Directors of Advantage Behavioral Health Services as a representative of the county. I serve on the uh, uh, Bineps, Athens Bineps Airport Authority as a liaison. I serve as liaison for the Greenway Commission. So I am, um, I'm in touch with not just what are the big issues, the overwhelming issues, but also the ones that have to do with our economic development, our quality of life, and the happiness of our citizens, all of them. All right, thank you. And uh, Jesse, you have a one minute rebuttal to that. Yeah, so I think what this uh, really speaks to for me is it's not just about what we know, but what we do. And uh, it's, so it's not just about what we know, right? Uh, and then also how we do it. Um, so I also know a lot about what we can do and have demonstrated a lot of work with others about what we need to do and to try to bring those things to the table. So when I've been standing with the Economic Justice Coalition, the Athens Anti-Discrimination Movement, or Dignidad Immigrante in Athens for living wages for county workers, for comprehensive anti-discrimination legislation, or to get a resolution passed that would support immigrants while standing against ICE, my opponent has been silent. Why are these organizations angry with my opponent and so excited about this campaign. So this also comes down to not only what we're willing to do, but also who we're going to do it with. And who I'm working with are folks like Linentown who are upset with my opponent, but who I'm working with are people of color who know what they need and can define their own path to healing and their own way forward. And we need to get behind them and help them facilitate that process as legislators. All right, Mr. Neesmith, you have your rebuttal. Yes, uh, first of all, Jesse, you have not been on a single commission or advisory uh, council on, in the government. You, you've been an activist and I admire you for that. That's important work, but that's not policymaking. I'm a policymaker. Number two, about the Linentown thing. Why do you continue to dwell on that? I'm the only commissioner who said, 
I would help that resolution go through the process that it needed to go to, to become legal, to become acceptable, and even collaborate with the University of Georgia so parts of it could be implemented. I'm the only commissioner who volunteered to do that. I've made that offer, it stands. I, I've never backed away from that, and I never will. I think you were a leader of the Linentown Project, and I wonder, I wonder what, what, what the manipulation is here, why you're throwing a bad light on me. When I'm the one who volunteered to help. All right, and the next question will go to Jesse Hull. And um, Jesse, the athens Clark County Police Department had six officer-involved shootings in 2019. Chief Cleveland Sproul called this number unprecedented. As a commissioner, what steps would you take to stop further incidents like this in the community? Uh, unfortunately, it's not unprecedented in America, and it speaks to the patterns of policing that have become far too normalized culturally. It is very fortunate for us that this hasn't happened in Athens the way it's been happening around the country, but it's not surprising to me that it's happened here because of the kinds of policies we've had in place and because of the increasing amount of militarized infrastructure that we're building around our police department. So I think we need to really fundamentally rethink how policing works and think of it more like social work. We have these crisis intervention response units. I think we need to think of those as the model for how the entire police department should work and be transitioning into that instead of that just being an inadequate two team unit that can't even be present you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We need people who are trained in de-escalation, who we need training practices that don't involve shoot to kill. We need to reduce that militarized surveillance infrastructure and training practices and replace it with patterns of social work, nonviolent intervention, and really rethink policing and how that plays into the prison industrial complex. The fact that the U.S. imprisons more people than any country in the world, and Georgia has the highest number of people of any state in the country wrapped up in the criminal justice system. So why, I mean, why is Athens participating in that by refusing to decriminalize small amounts of drugs? You know, why has my opponent not supported that when we've been fighting for that for years? Why are we continuing to use unpaid inmate labor, the most obvious example of modern day slavery, to do our county's jobs that could instead be paying a living wage? And I do want to take my last 30 seconds to just talk about how this does dovetail with getting behind people of color. I'll just say, I mean, I have nothing to do with starting the Linen Sound Project. They came to me and I just supported them right away. So I think they can speak for themselves as to why they continue to actually say the opposite of my opponent and that uh, he's certainly not the only one who supported them. Uh, he hasn't worked with them the way other commissioners like Mariah Parker or Tim Denson have um, and instead has told them what he thinks they need to do instead. Um, so I think instead what we need to do is get behind them. All right, and Mr. Neesmith, your rebuttal. Um, well, first of all, uh, the six police shootings, as you probably know, were, uh, were uh, I've seen the videos on at least five of them, were of very disturbed people, uh, mentally disturbed. Um, at least five of them were attempted suicides by cop and were successful. Uh, Chief Spruill responded um, very decisively to those shootings. The first thing he did is require that a single officer not respond to the shooting and try to intervene unless there was a danger of life to the, to the, to the, to the perpetrator or to people around him, and that they would wait for a team to show up with non-legal weapons to try to, to talk the guy down and, and, and subdue them. Number two, he did he, he conducted uh, crisis intervention training to every police officer. I participated in that training uh, and they learned a lot. Um, number three, the crisis intervention teams, uh, because I'm on Advantage Behavioral Health Board, were very much about a partnership between ACCPD and, and, and Advantage Behavioral Health. I stewarded the second team onto the budget. I intend to steward others. I agree that crisis intervention is key to so many of our problems here. All right, thank you. Uh, Jesse, your rebuttal? Yeah, I guess again, this just comes down to how proactive are we going to be as leaders? Um, why did it take six police shootings to rethink how policing should work? Um, and, and why was the mayor in commission, why were our commissioners not stepping up to direct the manager and the police chief to do things differently before? Why were the commissioners voting to give a quarter of a million dollars to a police officer who assaulted and nearly murdered somebody in East Athens 
by running them over with their car. Um, so I, I think you know what we're seeing is a pattern of reactionary government that responds only when they need to in a crisis instead of thinking proactively about how to make changes in advance that will set the stage to be more just, equitable, and harmonious moving forward. Okay, thank you both. Um, the next question will go to Mr. Neesmith. In 2019, the commission adopted a resolution committing to 100% clean and renewable energy for Athens by 2035. What are the best steps the county could take to meet those goals in just 15 years? Well, as a clarification, keep in mind that resolution wasn't for the county to reach 100% renewable energy. It was for government operations to be 100% renewable. We're taking steps in that direction. We're putting solar panels up um, on new buildings uh, all the time. Uh, we, we built a solar farm for a sewage reclamation facility. We'll keep, and we, and we keep funding additional projects through SPLOSC to continue to build that kind of infrastructure. We've got new modern buses that are hybrid. When electric buses reach the, uh, the, the maturity that they need to be to be effective, we will, buy, we will buy electric buses. So we'll continue to do that. In the meantime, we're also reducing our energy consumption, which isn't going to 100% renewable, but it is reducing our reliance on um, uh, fossil fuel energy. Also, as we move forward, we're gonna, because of our steps, we're gonna be encouraging our local power companies to provide us with source with energy that's, that's sourced from renewable renewable energy sources. That's a big step, and, and it's an absolutely essential one, which will help the entire county go toward uh, more renewable energy sources. All right, and Jesse, your rebuttal. Yeah, so we have a platform plank uh, on my platform, which is a Green New Deal in Athens. What does a Green New Deal look like in Athens? And I really want to emphasize the equity part of that, which is something that a lot of folks have had to kind of fight to be built into the language of that, like a lot of other policies. And because it's just a resolution, it's really going to take political will to carry it out in ways that codify that resolution, in ways that put budget money behind the proposals, and in, certainly in how we define equity. Um, my opponent has been one of the people who has not understood how to define equity appropriately when we're thinking about racial inequality in this community. I've been disappointed to see that play out as it has. I think we need people who understand that equity component. Um, I've been working with the um, folks who have been 100% Athens. One of their leaders is the treasurer of my campaign. Another one lives downstairs in the building I live in. Um, so I've been standing with the Georgia Climate Change Coalition for years for these sorts of things. A green building ordinance has sat on the shelf the entire time my opponent has been on the commission. What we need are people who are proactively leaning into making these policies happen and thinking about them equitably as we go about it. So environmental justice is intersected with economic and racial justice. Um, I guess I'll end there because I'm out of time. Thank you. All right, Mr. Neesmith, your rebuttal. Yeah, there's a, a, something we have done that perhaps Jesse doesn't remember. And that is we are now peeling a part of our franchise fees uh, for power. The power companies pay us. We're peeling that into a, a fund to use to help the, the low income people retrofit their, their, their homes with more efficient electricity or a use of electricity and so forth. So it's a small step, but it's a significant one. And Jesse, I don't know why you think I have been against equity. That's just makes no sense, sir. None whatsoever. Just not true. All right, thank you both. And the next question will go to Jesse Hool. Uh, the Lennon Town Project has been protesting for recognition and redress for the largely African American community that was torn down during urban renewal in the 1960s. What would be an appropriate response from the commission on this issue? Yeah, so um, didn't realize we get to talk about this so specifically. Thank you for asking about this. I think it's important that we elevate the work being done by community leaders uh, around Athens. The Linentown Project is a wonderful example of that, where people who lived through illegal racist displacement that was a collaboration between what was then the city government and the state and federal government to force, forcibly remove them from their homes, um, people who lived through that as children and or are the direct descendants of their parents who lived through that um, are now organizing around demanding recognition and redress. So the first thing we need to do is listen to them, uh, be at the table with them, and then support them. 
So a lot of this comes down to the nuanced ways that we think about how we as people in positions of power legislate. What does it mean to lead um, with all this power as a white person in a community that has a heavily racialized poverty rate? And how can we meaningfully support black people who need to define their own path forward? Um, I'm not gonna pretend like I can speak to why people like Hattie Whitehead or Miss, Ge Miss Geneva are so upset with Commissioner Neesmith among others. All I can say is that they are, and they have been, they've been very disappointed about what they feel was a betrayal of their trust, being told one thing and then seeing another happen. Um, and a lot of that has sounded like quibbling over certain words, or again, this gratuities clause question. So the most recent thing about the gratuities clause, the Linentown Project was talking about that. That was the dismissal of the Linentown Project's redress portion was citing this gratuities clause that we've now found a way around. So why would the commission, why would my opponent not look for that solution and say, you know what, this is awful. This illegal displacement, this forcible removal of your homes, this was terrible. We need to make it right and we're gonna find a way. We could have found the solution that is now also being used to address COVID-19. We could have found that solution of setting up a development authority before. Why not a development authority for reparations? Could be one example of how we could go about this of many, ultimately working with the people who are directly affected to define what the best option is. And working to find those options is exactly what I volunteered to do. I really appreciate the work that Ms. Hattie and you guys did to bring this issue to the forefront. It's an important issue and it does deserve recognition and redress. My commitment was to find a way to do that recognition and redress. As you know, that, that resolution has not been put on the agenda and the reason is quite simple. It cannot pass. And if it does pass, it can't be enforced because it, number one, it asks for some things to be done that cannot be done legally. Number two, it requires the collaboration with the University of Georgia. One of my commitments is that I would work with the University of Georgia to find a way to do some of the things, the things, including scholarships and a, and a, and a memorial, uh, a monument to, to this situation. Uh, that's what I volunteered to do. As I've said many times, that's my commitment. I stand behind it. I have been rejected. My offer for help has been rejected for no good reason whatsoever, except perhaps politically. Maybe there are some good reasons that I would encourage you to try to think deeply about. Um, why it's not on the agenda is because of a lack of political will. It's not like the resolution needs to be put immediately on the agenda. You could ask for it to be assigned to you. I have the political so will. It, I exhibited the political will. Time. Can I get a reset on the clock? for just like a few extra Give seconds. him five seconds. Go ahead. Um, and I'd appreciate my pronouns are they, them. So if my opponent could please use my correct pronouns, that would also be greatly appreciated. Um, so uh, it's a lack of political will. You as a commissioner can ask to have it assigned to your committee and then review it and make it better and invite them into the table to sit on the legislative review committee or the government operations committee, wherever it goes and give their feedback so you can work collaboratively to make it what it can be to be passed. Ultimately, it takes that political will and it takes courage takes the courage to be able to say that what happened was racist and white supremacist and that we need to make it right. And it takes courage to be willing to say that even when it's difficult and even when institutions like UGA are gonna to try to bully us about it. Jake. Yes, Mr. Neesmith. I have no problem calling it racist and white supremacist, it was. I was alive when urban renewal happened. I remember it. I say it is racist and it, and it, and it was terroristic to those people. It's up to the mayor to assign these things to committees. I would, and he knows this, I would be ha happy to be on a, serve on a committee that had this before it so we could work on it. That's a step that I wanted to get to by helping. I'm not trying, I was never trying to stop it. I know you don't believe it, but my heart was broken when I met with, with Ms. Hattie for an hour. I, it, it, was, it, was, it was a horrible, horrible story. One that I certainly would not want to ever have to live. I wanted to try to help. I still do. All right. Thank you both. And due to lack of time, we will go ahead and get to the two minute closing statements. And since Jesse, you went first, um, Mr. Neesmith, you can do your closing statement first. Okay. Thank you very much. I listen to and talk with people from every segment of our political and economic points of view. There is validity to every perspective except the radical ones. 
As a policymaker, I simply must listen and try to understand those perspectives. My promise to you, my constituents, is that I will continue to represent the common interests of all in helping to steer the policies and practices of the unified government of athens Clark County. My promise to you is that I will not rely on a political organization to steer me. I will continue to look to each of you and search my own mind and heart when making decisions about the community and the government, its role in our health, safety, and well-being and happiness. When you vote for a commissioner for District 6, vote for one who listens to you, everyone, addresses your issues as best they can, works hard on your behalf, collaborates effectively with his commission colleagues, institutional partners, and other government leaders, cares about the big issues and the small ones. As many of my constituents know, I have done these things for years and will continue to do so if you reelect me as your commissioner of District 6. Thank you. All right, and Jesse, you can go ahead with yours. Thanks. Um, I like to think a lot about questions. And to me, one of the most important questions to ask right now as, is something we've needed to ask all along, which is what needs to change and what are we going to do about it? As a friend of mine, Fenwick Broyard once said at a human rights festival, I was excitedly helping organize, what are you willing to lay down? Or to quote an internet meme, the struggle is real. People are struggling now and people have been struggling long before now. I'll say again that this pandemic is exacerbating all the crises that have been normalized. And just as some of us have been recognizing that longer than others, so too are some of us more willing to face those struggles than others. And in turn, some of us are more willing to do the difficult work than others. Um, this election comes down to who has a vision for where we need to go and who has the ambition to drive us there. One of us has a track record of fighting for and winning changes. And one of us has done a lot of rubber stamping for the status quo while letting others do the work to bring about the changes we need. We need commissioners who will do more than the bare minimum, who will step up and legislate and take action to make real change happen. While I was fighting for transparency to record our work sessions, win living wages for county workers and expand bus service, my opponent was silent and had to be dragged into doing the right thing and vote when someone else brought it to the table. While I was advocating for anti-discrimination legislation alongside Athens anti-discrimination movement, public EMS alongside when every second counts, and for marijuana decrim alongside the many orgs that have pushed for that, my opponent made excuses for why those things are unnecessary or couldn't happen. And while I've been organizing in coalition with countless organizations standing alongside AADM, Athens for Everyone, Dignidad Immigrante in Athens, and yes, now the Linentown Projects, and other people of color for the changes they know they need, my opponent has been ignoring them or standing in their way. So if you want to do more than survive these times, but thrive, then I'm your person and vote for me for District 6 Commissioner. You can learn a lot more at jessieforathens.com. You can email me directly at jessieforathens at gmail.com. I thank you all very much for your time. And I thank you very much, Mr. Neesmith, for finally admitting that what happened to the Linentown people was white supremacist and racist. I hope that that is an indication of a change for you. Thanks. Okay, thank you both for your responses and uh, best of luck with both of your campaigns going forward. Uh, we will be hosting another debate Friday evening at 6 p.m. on the athens Clark County Facebook page for the District 10 Commission seat. So tune into that if you can. And uh, thank you to all of our viewers and both of you have a good night. Thank you, Jake. Thank you, Jerry. Woo. I guess you left right away. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot, Jake. And whoever else is on the ACC DC, um, I really appreciate y'all setting this up. Um, I know that these things are incredibly difficult to organize under more normal circumstances. I can only imagine it's been an absolute mess and hectic craziness um, leading up to this point. So thanks so much for making the form happen.